Good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking your valuable time and attending this webinar, Tax Statement and 2018-19 Annual Financial Year Processing Class. A few housekeeping items, copy of the PowerPoint slide and case study materials should be emailed to you or the attendees um, before the webinar. In case you have not received or read the email, they can also be downloaded during the session. Recording of the webinar will be made available to all attendees by class website. Uh, we will try our best to answer any questions you may have during the webinar. At the end of the webinar, we'll send out a, a, a survey for some um, feedback. Uh, once we collate the polling results and Q&A sheets, we will make them available uh, to everyone along with the uh, video. Okay, uh, quick introduction about myself. So my name is Kevin Zhang. I'm the Compliance Tec Technical Service Manager at CLASS. Um, I have roughly about 20 years industry experience and 10 years with CLASS. Uh, I'm a chartered accountant, uh, sales minister fund specialist advisor. I'm also a registered tax agent. I graduated with Bachelor of Commerce and Law from Sydney University. So for anyone who has attended my webinar previously, my session tends to be um, quite technical and very hands-on. It is really aimed at experienced class users, sales and fund accountants and administ administrators who have to do administration processing class from beginning to finish. A quick disclaimer, the information provided today is in general in nature, should not be relied on as an advice. Some of the features and functionality may change and improve over time as we have taken into account clients' feedback and suggestions. Um, while we're waiting for more attendees to arrive, here's the first poll question on super reform. Let me just launch the poll for you. Okay. This first poll is in relation to uh, super reform. What are the biggest challenges in dealing with super reform implementation? Is it the transitional CGT relief, the new exempt current pension income calculation method, um, complying with transfer balance account reporting obligations, or the lack of total super balance and transfer, transfer balance account uh, information from ATO? And the last option is whether the reduced contribution caps, both for the concessional and non-concessional, as well as tracking unused um, constitutional contribution carry forward for members with total super balance less than half a million dollars. And I'll give you a few seconds to, to um, finish, uh, finish your selection. Okay. Thank you kindly for your answer. Uh, let's move on. Okay, what will we cover today? Um, so the first thing uh, it will be focusing on is the 2018-19 take on fund checklist. And this is if you're practicing how a new, new fund for another practice, what are some of the things you need to be watched for? Then we'll go through what are some of the typical transactions that you can potentially automate in class. And then we will spend some time on uh, focusing on the new labels and instructions uh, for the 2019 sale minutes by annual return. Uh, one of the processing bottleneck for end of year processing we have identified is to do with tax statements. Um, we will go through why it becomes so complex and how class uh, solution can, can potentially solve that bottleneck for you. So the first thing we we about to launch is the, um, the OCR or uh, optical character recognition technology where basically you can scan your um, tax statements then it convert to a, a tax statement distribution event for you. Um, some of you probably already familiar with the tax statement automation that we launched in March this year and we will showcase how how that's supposed to work for the 19, um, 19 tax statement season. Finally we will um, do a comprehensive case study. Um, you should um, have your handouts ready. Uh, this is based on uh, Piggy Superfund. Um, we'll go through um, 
you know, a lot of intricacies relate to that case study and, and how you uh, prepare the end of your processing to all the way to produce the return. Um, then the duration of the webinar should be roughly about one hour. However, we'll, we'll keep the session running for extra 15 minutes. This is to facilitate any questions you may have do, during the webinar or after the webinar. Uh, a formal Q&A sheet will be distributed to everyone. And we will use that as the basis for some knowledge-based articles and user, user guide content. Okay, let's get started. Okay. Checklist for take on funds on or after 30 June 2018. Um, why it is important? Well, if you inherit a new, uh, a new fund for another practice, uh, chances are well, with 30 June 2018 as the book close day, chances are they probably already lodged their um, um, T-bar information. You need to fund that information. So the first thing is confirms member's transfer balance account. Ideally, uh, if you appoint as the tax agent for that member as well, uh, you can get that information through the tax agent portal. Alternatively, you have to get the members to log into the MyGov to confirm that information. Then you can use the manual T-bar uh, events in class to update the member's transfer balance account. So they match with ATO's record. Um, and, and thirdly, if any pension account that was previously lodged through other software or by paper, then you need to um, uh, find out the pension account identifier uh, and then uh, make that change in class. And I will show you an example how you actually do that uh, later on. The next part is to do with total super balance. So by default, we were using, say, if it's 30 June 2018, members close balance, we'll use that to approximate members total super balance. But sometimes that's not accurate. Um, and, and then you can use um, um, the contribution, the member contribution caps area to update uh, members uh, super balance, especially if they have external super balance outside of their sale minute super fund. The important of that information is it will determine the member's eligibility to receive uh, non-concessional contributions as well as ability to carry forward and use uh, concessional contributions. Now, follow on that, um, if the fund is initially loaded to class, generally uh, with any pension accounts, we don't uh, ask you for a conditional release. Um, and if a member is between the age of their preservation age and 65, if you don't update condition release to reflect it's a retirement phase income stream, the system automatically treat it as a trace. And therefore it may not um, accurately reflect the correct status of that uh, pension account. If it's some of the pension accounts kept defined benefit income stream, uh, then the 30 June 17 special value still needs to be recorded. Um, the other thing is some of the members may have already triggered their um, uh, bring forward rules uh, in prior years, you need to confirm that information uh, when the fund is brought on to, to class. And lastly, but, but, but not the last, last important point is specific relation to 30 June 2019. And this is if the fund is loaded with 30 June 2019 closing balance. Uh, if the member's total suit balance is less than half a million dollars, you need to make sure you capture the concessional contribution they made in the previous year. So we'll quickly show you how, how, how that is supposed to work in, in a demo fund. Okay, here, here's my checklist fund, two members, uh, Dave and Victoria Smith. Let's quickly have a look at members balance. Um, so it's a typical, what I call a lopsided fund. Uh, Victoria has actually got huge balance, nearly seven and a half million dollars and David has only got uh, less than half a million dollars sits in his balance. Um, so Victoria is actually retired. Um, and because her, she's between preservation and, and age 65, we need to confirm her, um, her um, uh, conditional release for her pension account. So uh, uh, let's just select that put retirement, save, okay.
the next thing is you go to her pension account, um, edit, and click maintain establishment details. Now here, this is the um, pension account identifier. So in class, the first pension account was always default to one, but in this case, the previous accountant, um, when they launched the T-bar for her, the identifier was VIC ABP1. You just need to make the changes and save that. Um, obviously, the condition release was was retirement, so you need to um, confirm that. So once you've done that, the system will cor correctly reflect that this pension account as a retirement phase income stream. Now the next thing you need to do is go to um, the contribution uh, or TBAR console area for the fund. Um, even though her pension balance is about $1.5 but um, million dollars at the moment, at the 30 June 2019, but when she started pension, oh, when she um, when she inherited pension at the 30 June 2017, it was 1.6 million. So we need to reflect that. To do this, you do a manual T by event, and you select superannuation income stream, tick the box. This is an adjustment. It, it is not uh, a T by lodgement that you want to lodge. Um, select Victoria. Uh, pension account. So the effective date in this case will be 1st July uh, 2017 and the balance was 1.6 million dollars. Once you're happy with the result, submit. Then you go to her um, TBA account. So I can see um, She's got one point. She fully utilized her um, transfer balance cap of 1.6 million, um, and that should match with the records uh, on my of or your tax agent portal. Now let's move on to Dave. So Dave, in this case, he's got a trust, so there's nothing to be reported in relation to transfer balance account. However, we need to confirm his contribution information. So to do that, let's go to contribution caps. Um, now, the financial year is 2019-20, um, but the total suit balance is actually reflected here. So we'll be using his 30 June 19 balance. Say Dave actually has got external super balance uh, in upper funds. Say he's got actually 240,000. Then you need to confirm that. Now, this will bump his total super balance well above um, half a million dollars. 715. So he's no longer able to care for his unused concessional contribution cap. Now let's say it was not 240, but 24,000. And um, he actually made about $10,000 uh, non concessional contribution uh, for the year ending 30 June 2019. So let's just um, reflect that information. And lastly, but not least, he has not triggered his bring forward rule uh, in the 17, 18, or 18, 19 financial year. Let's just tick this box to acknowledge that. Submit. So you notice um, his cumulative available unused cap is reduced from 25,000, which is the general cap for everyone, to 15,000. That means for the year ending 30 June 2020, he can potentially make a uh, uh, concessional contribution up to $40,000 and because his total suit balance is less than half a million dollars as at the previous financial year. Um, so it is very important that you, when you take on the funds, uh, it's not just about, you know, check uh, their care for capital losses and, and all other information. Uh, this is additional information you need to be aware of. Okay, let's move on to the slides. Now, before I move on, what type of transaction can potentially automate in class? I want to touch base a little bit about what transactions generally cannot be uh, automated. As you can see, they are typically to do with you know, pension advice, establishment, commutation, trees conversion, death benefit pension, 
um, uh, a lump sum payment or a lump sum computation, uh, so a partial computation of, of your pension account, um, family law settlements, on the contribution side, rover in, contribution split, um, downsize the contribution, um, you know, a large unexpected concessional or non-concessional contribution, any transition to do with the property, whether there is LRBA involved or not. You can see those are very complex transactions. They are usually what I call of one-off um, transactions, and pretty much most of them require an input from a financial advisor or, or, or a specialist, SMS specialist. So this is the area um, as a practice you should focus on, um, but in order to do that, you have to do your bread butter, you know, do your compliance aiming work uh, properly. And those are re we should refer as bread butter type of work. So those type of transactions you can, well, those ones you can't automate, but the next slide, you want to automate those transactions as much as possible. A lot of, um, a lot of um, successful class customers, they are able to achieve 80 to 90% automations in class, simply using the power of, you know, the, the, the super string SMS data flow, the data feeds, um, for cash broker, wrap accounts, plus uh, quite a lot of transaction rules, um, then you can see those high frequent, high volume, repetitive transactions, you know, in, in theory should just come through automatically. And you, and a class has built over the years to basically support that as much as possible. We, um, you know, contributions uh, you should use in the data flow solutions, or SMS data flow solutions. Uh, unfortunately, the super string extension for um, uh, Rove in is delayed to 31st of March 2021. But once it's available, potentially you can, a uh, Cellman Sufan will receive uh, Rove in uh, electronically uh, and, and, and process through data flow, SMS data flow automatically. Uh, most people should be familiar with how class generate uh, income based on access uh, reference data. But if you combine with the broker balance, most of the income being dividend distribution, interest income, foreign income, will be generated automatically. They even support the DRP uh, processing as well. The expense side, all the regular expense you, you can think of, accountancy fee, admin fee, advisor fee. You, if, you credit, if you get a cash fee, credit transaction rule, you should just take care of yourself. On the investment side, we did a lot of stuff to support um, the buy and sell transactions for shares, listed trusts, managed funds through uh, whether it's M funds or um, through a wrap platforms, turn deposit buy and sell through um, through the providers such as money market and fixed securities. Um, then you have the corporate 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 actions where uh, we have a console. We build a lot of templates for you to automate a lot of those corporations. You can process in bulk or process of in fund. The tax statement on the other side um, it will be uh, the focus of this presentation is we will show you some of the uh, new functionality. We will help you to automate that process. Foreign foreign shares, foreign bank account, uh, if your brokers or platforms support them, a lot of them can be automated through class as well. Uh, pension payments, if, if you you know, member draws weekly or monthly pension drawdowns, we encourage you to use, do a pension review, query transaction rules, uh, then um, everything should just take care of itself, uh, similar with the member insurance premiums. Okay, now how, how do I measure if I'm getting 89% automation? So a quick rule of thumb is what you do is you go to uh, browse events or browse business events, and then you select group by, um, and the, the, select the last one, which is processed by. If the percentage of events is processed by class, whether it's income generation, automated feeds, manual feeds, um, and um, you know, SMS data flow, et cetera, then you know those are automated. Then you divide that to total uh, business events processed. If you are able to get 80 to 90% plus, then you should give yourself a pat the back. You are doing great. If your percentage is less than 50, then in my view, you're not using class to its full potential. Uh, chances are you're likely to have 
uh, write-offs on, on, on the admin job rather than write-ons. And uh, either yourself or your staff um, will be overworked or under service some of your clients. Now it's at the beginning of financial year, it's always the best time um, to, 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 to aim for more automations. And this is by how you do how you achieve that. The first thing is um, make data fee setup as your priority. The more data feeds you get, the more automation you will uh, you will receive uh, through processing class. Uh, do pension reviews, take advantage of transaction rules, use business um, consoles, particularly the cash console. We see a lot of powerful um, administrators, the large administrators. That that's their daily focus. Is basically yes, uh, the initial you know couple of months will be uh, tedious, uh, will be a bit of uh, work, but over time, as you build more rules and more transaction rules across multiple funds, as the daily cash fee coming through, there's less less transaction. regional sales manager and our, our, our implementation consultant and now we're rebranding them as client success team for a health check of your practice and they will see how much automation you're achieving through class okay the next part is the um what's new in the 2019 sales management annual return we'll go through part a qualification to do with audit um the Label 7 electronic fund transfer details uh, are changed a little bit. We will, we will touch base the town size contributions. Um, they are outstanding limited recourse borrowing arrangement amount in the member section and cryptocurrency label in the assets and liability section. Okay, um, many of you already aware of this um, in the press. Um, so the order question now have an extra, extra part to do with Pi A, Pi A to do with is in relation to the financial reports. Um, so ATO has not, even though the three-year tricycle audit measure is, uh, has not been, we won't use that question to uh, to build a risk profile of, of the sale manager super fund. Now, if you answer uh, yes to the question, it does not mean, it does not automatically flag the fund will be audited or reviewed by the ATO, but um, it will, it will be one of the indicators they will take into account when they make that assessment. Electronic fund transfer details, uh, some instructional changes have been made on, on this label. So the, the idea was to better support the extension of super string rovers for sale managed super fund. Unfortunately, that match is, is delayed to, to uh, March 2021. Um, but just be in mind, you, the, the 7A label has to be the bank account related specifically to sale managed super fund. 7B, so if you wish the tax refund go to, uh, say, the tax agent's trust account, you can do that. And I will show you how you do that in class. And the last one is to do with the electronic service address. So if you're using class, the default information should be uh, SMS data flow. Downsizer contribution from 1st July 2018, individuals aged 65 or over will be able to make a contribution to the super up to $300,000 from the proceed of selling their main residence. The beauty of this is this contribution will not count towards the concessional or the non-concessional caps. The individual making this contribution will not need meet the existing age restrictions or work test. And it, it is also affected by the total super balance of 1.6 million. So I, I can see a lot of um, advisors will, will, will take advantage of this strategy. I won't go through the eligibility of, of um, uh, you know, how, uh, for that particular contributions, but there are basically two labels, the amount and the date, uh, receipt date for, for that contribution. So you need to make that contribution uh, uh, 90 days after after signed the, the, the contract. Okay, LRBA amount. So so this, this one's interesting. Um, so what I want to focus is that the original intention for this particular label was that uh, in relation to the 2017 budget, where the government announced uh, a superannuation integrity measure. Um, they want to capture that information predominantly for uh, LRBAs from 1st July 2017, uh, where members have met a new cash restriction conditional release. This was designed to reduce the attractiveness of members manipulating their total super balance by drawing down their interest and uh, returning those money to their sale management fund through LRBA. Unfortunately, the proposal did not, 
did not pass through the legislation. However, ATO still have this label on, 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 on the return. Um, and, and basically, they, they extend that effectively for, for statistic purposes. So in my view, um, that particular label has equal uh, weighting to the question, how many hours did it take you to complete cell minus of annual return? It's purely for stats purposes. Now, should you wish to calculate, uh, we'll go through an example in the case study, uh, how you put that number in that box. Cryptocurrency, again, uh, this one is to do with any sale management fund holding investment in cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoins. Um, uh, ATO is actually do, uh, collecting uh, bulk records from uh, Australian cryptocurrency designated service providers and basically they want to cross-match the data and to make sure taxpayers are paying the right tax in relation to those, the, those investments. Um, there are two tax IDs uh, which are hyperlinked um, in, in the PowerPoint slide. And, and basically, they should be treated as CGT assets. Okay. Now let's move on to tax statements, um, and this is to do with uh, processing tax statements with uh, ME adjustments. Uh, I think it's this is the uh, perfect time to launch the second poll questions, and uh, which is specifically to do with tax statements. Okay, so the question is, how are you going to handle tax statement processing uh, in, for 2019? Uh, a, uh, mostly manual entry based on client supply statements. B, uh, mostly through data feeds that support tax statement. C, mostly relying on the new tax statement automation that we released in March this year. D, uh, we want to leverage the tax statement OCR solution that class is about to, to release. And E, the last option is um, combination of the above. I will give you an uh, extra 10 seconds to complete this question. Then I'll continue with my presentation. Thank you for your answers. Okay, let's move on. Okay, uh, I what I did here is I put a, a nice table to compare uh, the difference between AMIT and the existing Managing Investment Trust regime. So AMIT stands for Attribution Management Investment Trust. It's actually introduced uh, since I think 2016. Um, and because of that, it actually made tax statement processing even more complex. I'll show you a couple of examples of why. So just some basic concepts is the, the, the regional management invest, investment trust works on a present entitlement basis. The new one is uh, based on attribution on a fair, reasonable base. Uh, so under uh, the regional regime, the intention is make cash distribution uh, correspond to taxable income and you normally dis distribute in full. Whereas in the AMIT regime, um, you have the concept of attribution and cash. More, than, more often than not, the cash and the attribution amount are completely different. And this led to the next part is that uh, in the old regime, you tend to only have one type of cost base adjustments, which is tax deferred, uh, which will reduce the cost base. In the AMI regime, you will have a reciprocal uh, uh, nature of the cost base adjustments. So you can have increased cost base or, or decreased cost base. Depends on, um, on the amount attributed and the amount the cash received. The terminology is slightly different. So the, the old one is called standard distribution statement. The new one is called AMMA statement. So AMIT member annual statements. Um, now, these slides I summarized uh, the difference. If you received attributed amount more than cash, then uh, this will lead to uh, uh, lead to a net cost base increase or in, uh, 
uh, in another term, it's M cost base net amount is a shortfall. Then the, the cost base of the investment will be increased by the M cost base. The reverse is true. So if attribute amount is less than cash, the balancing item that, that, that you need to enter in class is the tax exempt amount. So this amount, so if it's less than cash, then you will have M cost base reduction, so negative. Um, the idea is um, later when sell the investments, you will have higher capital gain or low capital loss. Um, similar to tax deferred adjustments, if tax deferred adjustments exceed the, the, the cost base or just cost base of the investment, it will trigger capital gain, CGTFM. Uh, attribution uh, amount has similar effect, it's, it will trigger CGT event E10. Okay. This is um, an old Mervac statement from the 17th financial year. The cash amount is $9,990. Oh, sorry, $9,900. Uh, you will see there's uh, the amount to do with non accessible and the uh, MA cost base that's adjustment with 1690. Now, how you enter that in class? There are two methods. Method one is basically you enter the non accessible amount as tax exempt amount and this one will have in, increased cost base um, ME adjustments, so you put positive number as 1690.91. Everything will be reconciled to the cash, which is $9,900. Method two, which is I, I think is more intuitive method. So this is where basically you have your capital gain, then you uh, it's a discount capital gain, so it's concession amount tend to be exactly the same amount. You still have your emit there, which is 1690.91. The difference between the two is your tax exempt amount, which you can enter negative. There are only two fields on this event that you can enter negative. One is tax exempt, one is the emit cost based adjustments. And, and you can see they are effectively reciprocal of each other. So if the emit is, is positive, the tax exempt, uh, exempt amount is negative. If, if emit is negative, this, this field should normally reflect as the positive and that's the balancing item uh, between the attribution amount and the cash. This is uh, a worked example for, for um, 2019 uh, uh, VAS, Venga Australian Share Index Fund. Um, now the reason M is complex is if you just look at this, the cash and attribution amount, if your cash plus tax credit does not equal to attribution amount, so you have to reverse engineer that number. So in, in a franking distribution example, you have 23,101 minus franking credits at 15,901.86. That's the amount you need to report it as a dividend franked amount here, not the cash, which is 15,922.93. The foreign income and work of very similar principles. Again, it's uh, you have to reverse engineer the net amount put in the, uh, the, this event. The attribution amount, and, oh, sorry, the ME amount is 792.65. You put this amount here, then you will see the tax exempt amount is the balancing, which is seven, negative 792.65. So um, just remember this page number, this slide number 21, we'll come back to that because we're actually going to use the tax time OCR solutions to, to do this. Now, good news, this new feature will be released as a public beta, hopefully next week. The tentative day is 1st August 2019. The solution works best if you have digital PDF. What I mean by digital PDF is ideally is the tax statement that you download directly from the share registry or managed fund registry without scanning. However, if your scan or printer are uh, you know, of good quality, a scan PDF will also be supported. Minimum DPI, uh, minimum resolution is 300 DPI. Stable security is not supported, but you can still upload a tax statement through the document management system. Same with the wrapped tax statements. Um, and what I try to focus, emphasize here is that even if you cannot, you know, OCR or extract the tax statement, we still recommend that you upload the statements through class, then and just raise a support call uh, to, to our support team. We have a dedicated team basically try to take on those tickets, analyze your tax statements. The more tax statements you supply us, 
the quicker we can turn around and convert the stemming to a, a template ratio, then you can massively apply it to all the investments that, that, that need that tax statement. Um, it's, 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 it's public beta, that means uh, any feedback on accuracy, speed, and user friendliness of this feature are welcome. And this will allow us to basically improve the quality of this feature over time. Tax demo automations. So um, some people are familiar with this. We launched this service in March 2019. Generally, it's well received by all clients. We support uh, what we call a widely held uh, list trusts, uh, exchange traded funds, stable securities, and managed funds. So the rule of thumb is if we've got more than 100 uh, super funds or portfolios investing, that particular investment will hunt down the ratio to, to create our community community templates. Um, now, this hyperlink will give you a list of the securities we support for the 17-18 financial year. Um, the 18-19 will be uh, very similar. So pretty much all the ACS list securities are supported and about close to a thousand uh, most widely held managed funds, including some of M funds. Now, the second one is it will give you the, the processing that you need to uh, make a request for tax statement templates, but I will show you that in, when I do the case study. Stable securities is also supported for all of them. Ten of them require a special processing. Um, basically, these, those ones are in relation to the financial boundaries where you have to adjust the distribution and dividend uh, income in order to take advantage of their our community uh, template for those stable securities. So this link will go to a user guide explain, uh, page uh, explaining how you um, how you do the distribution cash and dividend amount. Uh, we are working on a solution to automate that. Um, hopefully it will be made available very, very soon. Okay, I want to touch base briefly on type of statement ratios um, and what they mean. So constant varying aggregated. So constant means generally the ratio will be the same regardless uh, how many units it got. So it's a uniform and therefore it, it will just apply across um, uh, for your investments. Varying, the most common example will be the Vanguard uh, stable security, uh, Vanguard, sorry, exchange traded funds or managed funds. So if they say they pay quarterly distribution, each quarter will have its own unique tax component breakdown. What class, um, you know, the tax statement team is, is actually reverse engineered that ratios. We, we, we work out the breakdown for each quarter and then we will apply that, um, apply that accordingly. That means when you buy more units during the year, as long as they're entitled to that extra or less distribution for that quarter, that the ratio will be applied. So again, in that scenario, um, the tax statement will be some more support automatically. The less, um, the more difficult one, what we call aggregated. So what that means is if the units are not changed throughout the year, or at least around the uh, X date, um, then, then the ratio will be applied um, and you can generate tax statements. One of the common reasons where you, you know, you see the securities list in our approved community list, but it says uh, manual, uh, manual processing, manual statement required. That means that particular investment must have a buy and sell during the year that affects how we apply the aggregated ratio. Um, again, uh, RAP platform is not uh, not supported and our hope is that we'll improve the quality of data feeds uh, for those tax, uh, tax statements, but we have to work with provider, um, provider, um, provider by provider basis. Okay, um, now, the last part of my presentation was dedicated on this case study, uh, which is should be in your um, uh, handouts. Um, and I'll go through um, a, a more comprehensive processing uh, in class. Now, just quickly touch base, what are some of the facts? It's two member firm, Pepper and George, and both, uh, both about to 1065 during the 1819 financial year. They currently have, so Pepper has got $1 million in trees, which will convert to uh, retirement, trees in retirement phase on 1st January. Um, George, his $800,000 trees were converted uh, on 1st March um, when he turned 65. They sold their family home 
and made a downsizer contribution on 31st of May 2019 for $300,000. Normally, I would recommend you start a pension search straight away. But this scenario, I want to uh, uh, suggest they start a pension on 1st June. Why? First, if you start a pension on 1st June, there's no uh, minimum pension drawdown requirements. So we will show how you actually do that. Now, um, and as you can see, the, um, the, the, the fund structure is that, you know, for, for, for the first few months, it's segregated mostly in accumulation phase or non-retirement phase because it's increased. Then as and they convert both trees into retirement phase, it become, uh, we'll call it deemed segregated for a period of a uh, couple of months until they receive the the, uh, the downsizer contribution. And then the next day, they, they convert the whole contribution to a new income stream. Again, it becomes deemed segregated. Now, a couple of interesting points with the fund is that it's got, uh, a property with our RBA, um, $400,000 RBA borrowing amount. The fund also invests in Bitcoins. Um, we, we're going to show how you actually flag set up in class. And finally, it's got some of, um, you know, uh, exchange traded funds, uh, list the trust, the, the S Center, so what we we'll use tonight is uh, Westfield Retail Trust, and a couple of managed funds. So let's go through how you process that in class. Okay. First thing first. Um, now, let me find. Okay. I'll close that. Um, the first thing I want to show you the exception reports. Why? Um, so, I already processed most of the transaction to do with this fund. So, this including, you know, uh, the rental statements, the cash received for distribution, dividends, um, you know, the, the, the regular expense like accounting fee, advisor fee, etc. The only thing I haven't processed is tax statements, which is part of my de demonstration here, um, and also some of the TRIS conversion uh, events and pension establishment. Um, I want to show here is that you can see overwhelmingly there's a lot of exception errors or exception warnings how you potentially use Clark to leverage that, um, to solve that, that problem, okay? Uh, we start with, um, let's start with the, the investment. Okay, as I said, the fund has a property worth $1 million. Uh, the recent market value has reduced to about $840,000 due to property, uh, sluggish property market. But because the property is LRBA, we need to change that to, to reflect it's a LRBA investment. So by default, you will create as res residential uh, real properties. But in this case, you need to change the tax classification as LRBA, Australian residential real, pro uh, real property. Save that. That's it. That's all you need to do with the property account. The next thing is the long account. So let's go back to browse holding account. This is the CBA loan. So, and you know, if it's a real bank loan, um, by default when credit, it'll, it'll create a uh, cash product. Uh, but let's let's change that. Okay. So for uh, general ledger classification, we recommend you select a borrowing or a limited recourse borrowing arrangements. The tax return classification. Very important, it's borrowings, LRBAs, and obviously it's um, uh, it's a non-CGT asset. The other thing I recommend is you link the loan back to the property. And this way for asset allocation purposes, you will use the, the property asset allocation. So that's it. You have set up LRBA correctly now. So hopefully that settings will flow through to the tax return. Let's fix the cryptocurrencies. Um, so I have some Bitcoins. So there are two ways you can set up Bitcoins or cryptocurrencies. One is use custom holding accounts. The other ones use unlisted investment. Uh, uh, the beauty of unlisted investments, you can potentially uh, have a concept of units, how many, how many Bitcoins you've got. Um, so the only thing you need to change here 
is so you used to be out assets which is fine but for tax return you've got a new label cryptocurrency so make sure you change that save it and that's it okay now we have made those changes um, the last thing I want to show you is that remember our touch base if you have a bank account belong to the belong to the tax agents trust account so I still encourage you to set up as bank account but do not create data feeds for it secondly do not ever enter a balance it's effectively become a, 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 like a zero balance account in this case a trust account the beauty is if you create this bank account and obviously the information will be accurate then you can just select um, uh, select uh, update this tax returns through a drop down rather than manually enter which leading to data entry errors okay now um, the next part I will show you is the uh, tax statement processing um, so remember I have four investments um, one of them is not in here that's because it was linked to our RAP providers now some of the question we often receive is if I have got investment in use RAP providers but I still want to take advantage of the ta uh, you know class tax item uh, tax statement uh, automation solutions how do I do that the easiest way is actually create a feeds console create a new feeds product called directly held like this then you just tick the investment so in this case this investment belong to belong to um, a Macquarie wrap but I want that to be to be uh, directly held so tick that save it and then go to um, tax demon consoles so it's not refreshing then all you need to do is go to um, go to one of the business events for that security and just just uh, reprocess that event type uh, then I sort by count name so this will be a distribution of, uh, this is a pin code it's one of them so let's select this one uh, edit save as incomplete and submit then if I refresh here it's coming through okay um, now let's do the Vanguard first uh, the Vanguard one first so uh, you have that in your handouts so this is second page of a handout and also it's on page remember I mentioned page 21 of the slides um, and we'll show you the breakdown so let's go select um, so at the moment you only have uh, upload option but once after the beta release you will have the ability to upload an extract select the files so this is Vanguard VS open upload now um, if you got um, the slides um, turn to page 21 of your slides have a look at the numbers so remember the, the dividend franked amount is actually calculated and it should be 1591.86 and that match exactly to that slide and also foreign income it should be 403.54 franking credits 7109.49 all the information is perfectly re uh, reconciled the MA amount is 792.65 tax exempt amount is the exact opposite this one you know I don't need to do any data entry other than upload this upload and extract this statement I I'm happy with it sorry let me just Uh, let me just reset the reason I, I will tell you one, one, why I want to reset is because we know this farm uh, is because we know this fund is moving out of the uh, segregation boundaries so it become unsegregated and deemed segregated so it's best to um, to use the option um, use distribution date rather than 30 June so you this way the system will provide the distribution amount to each distribution in, uh, in the relevant period 
as you can see here, rather than using 30 June. So yeah, just tick this box and submit. All right. We'll do similar exercise with the next one, which is VG, uh, VGS, which is another Vanguard one. So upload document. Sorry, upload an extract. Select the file. We've got VGS, open, upload. Again, um, this should be the third page of your handouts. Just do a sanity check on the numbers. Uh, your foreign tax credits 5144, 51, which is spot on. And amount is $11.18. Which is which is uh, which is there, um, and the negative is tax exempt. So this one works perfect as well. Tick the box, submit. So the last one is a managed fund belong to our RAP providers, but I I have the statements. I want to use the OCR solution. Um, rather than getting the data feeds. So let's do that. This is PINCO. Open. So this is the uh, PINCO Global Bond Fund Wholesale Class. Upload. Uh, we'll tick this option. Submit. Okay, um, Okay. the, the last one uh, I want to showcase is the, the shopping center, uh, the S center group. Um, it's a stable securities. Um, the, 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 this one, so uh, if you have the statement, you want a class to, to support that, what you do is you just upload the document. SCG, upload. Then the next thing you need to do is just just raise a support support uh, raise a support ticket. Uh, uh, so what you want to do is um, it's general queries. Your name is Kevin KZ. Subject is I want the SCG tax statement template request. Type is uh, tax statement template request. And please create a, a template. That's it. Once you send through, um, class team will. Um, it's one of the most secure way to send documents through. With you don't need to actually attach any emails. Class will go to the document management system to download them and and have a look. And, and try to compute the ratios for you. Now, SCG, we already compute the ratios for you in this uh, example. Uh, you can actually just um, use the generate capabilities within class to generate. So this is what I refer as the tax demo automation. Um, again, you tick use distribution date, submit that. And you know you want to check the numbers. Um, this is on page six of your handouts. The um, the Franken credits should be uh, six four five point two seven plus one dollar seventy six. So six four seven point zero three. So it's very close. Cash match, uh, tax deferred, discount gain. You know there there are there will be some small rounding difference, but in most cases immaterial. Immaterial. Okay. Uh, once you're happy, you submit that. Okay, let's go back to exception errors. See if I have uh, whether I have resolved most of them. Okay, the only thing it's not resolved is to do with the uh, the, fun, uh, the ECPI boundary conditions, uh, which can be resolved through the period update process. So let's go through that. So remember, uh, Pepper 1065 on 1st January. So the system is smart enough to prompt you to run a period update at the the day before she turns 65 because the truth conversion. So let's do that. All 
obviously um, now her balance is ascertained. Let's do the truth conversion for her. It's on 1st January. This is the balance. It's less than 1.6. Let's submit that. So you click next peer update. So this is when George turns 65, but when he turns 65 um, on 1st March, the fund effectively becomes deemed segregated. So when you have two conditions, trees conversion and a method change, a method change text president as the narrations. So let's just process that. We'll do another truth conversion. On 1st of March. Okay. The next thing you need to do is um, I've already processed the transactions um, for his downsizer contribution. Um, or oh, it's actually incomplete state. Uh, let me just submit that member contribution. So the contribution was made on 31st of May 2019, $300,000 each. Uh, so you get you get a warning about this, um, but they're both 1060 they're about work tests. But this is not subject to work test so you just submit that you also got a warning that in order for the fund to receive this contribution you have to complete uh, uh, the downsize uh, information supernatural form there's ATL stationery uh, available that that you can use that form class will build now let's go back to peer update uh, run again And the reason it prompts you to run to the day before is that the EC, again, because of the contribution, the ECPR method effectively changed from uh, deem unsegregated to, to, to deem segregated to deem unsegregated or unsegregated. So let's just process that. And because I started pension on 1st June, I need to run another peer update just for 31st of May. So um, 31st of May 2019, uh, there was pension establishment. Okay. Then we're going to um, basically start a pension for both uh, Pepper and George on 1st June. Uh, because they start first June, there's no minimum uh, drawdown requirements. Uh, let's go browse members. So I already created a pension account. Um, we just need to establish them. So edit, establish pension account. Conditional release to over 65, it's a full amount. Next. So notice there are some earnings allocated. So there'll be more than $300,000. Let's go submit that. Um, then we do that for George as well. Uh, add it. Establish this pension account. Uh, Conditional is age 65. Uh, full amount next. Okay, happy with that. Submit. Okay. Um, peer update. So let me just check the exception uh, report yet again to make sure that there's um, everything is 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 resolved. And then I'll run the next peer update to the end of financial year. 30 June. Ah, everything's clear. Beautiful. Um, the final piece I will show you the actual certificate process. Um, so request a certificate. Uh, let's get it from Acurium, but it works for any providers. This is just for illustration purposes. Uh, let's go. Okay, logging. 
yes, okay. We you prefer all the details and uh, as well as the downsides of contribution. Let's go. Um, now, this is a nice picture where it shows effectively when the fund becomes dim segregated. Um, so the first phase is in trees, then part trees, part retirement phase. From 1st March onwards, it becomes dim segregated until they received non concessional con uh, the downsizer contribution on 31st of May. For one day, it's unsegregated, then from 1st June to end of financial year, it's dim segregated. So that trust certificate effectively applies from um, uh, 1st July to uh, 28th of February and one day on the 31st of May. So once you're happy with that, so balance at 30th of May for PEPA was zero, account-based pension zero because I quit on 1st June rather than not that day, just confirm that. Next, uh, give me a percentage of 14.99. So let me just copy this percentage. Well, obviously, uh, if I go down through the payment process, um, and then, then um, the, the percentage will send through to class directly. So let's go go settings, fund default, uh, change the actual percentage. Now you only need one actual percentage for the year, even though there are a lot of changes during the year, from um, you know unsegregated to being segregated. One percentage is enough. Okay, save that and most importantly, you only need to roll back one peer update, not all of them. Roll back. New. So you got the 14.922. So you run the peer update. Now we're ready to um, to produce the tax or the draft tax return. Finalize tax. And view tax return. Okay. Now, quickly, I want to show you um, the audit section. Um, there's a new question, part A. By default, class will make that not qualified. Sh uh, if it's actually qualified, you need to answer yes to that question. The uh, sections are labeled seven to do with the, um, the bank account details. So if I would like to tax refunds made to another account, you will say uh, no to this question, then you can nominate another account. The beauty of set up a trust account for the tax agent here, all you need to do is select the trust account, tax agent trust account. It will prove all the information for you. Um, okay, happy with the information. I want to show you uh, section H, which is asset liability. So you have your IRBA's uh, property value there. The loan value should be 400,000 there. Cryptocurrency is 15C. There, 300, um, roughly about $300,000. So it's autom automated, autom automatically populated for you nicely. Let's go to uh, section F, the member sections. So we have the new information to do with downsize the contribution, uh, 300,000 and the date it's received. Similar with George, uh, 300 and date. Now, if I just go approve and approve and approve, and validate. So hopefully all the information is able, oh, there's a couple of information to LRBA need to be answered, date of all that is required, but everything else is, is, is validated and you can lodge through the return. So let's just fix um, the LRBA questions. So that's to do with this. Um, if the fund has LRBA, was the LRBA financed through, through a financial license finance institution? So the loan was with CBA, so it is yes, and it's not, uh, there's no personal guarantee. Uh, let's say, save that. Now, remember I mentioned about the uh, outstanding LRBA amount. So should you wish to enter that amount, it's entered through here. So the fund is roughly, remember the fund uh, is about 60% um, reflected to PEPAS balance, 40% to 
to George Balance because she had 1.2, he had 800,000. So if we use that as a pro approximate to, uh, to 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 work out the ratios for for the outstanding loan amount, which is 400,000, so in this case you put 240,000 uh, as outstanding loan, and for George, 160. So as long as the combined amount does not exceed 400,000, you're okay. Uh, approve. That's it. So apart from the audit, uh, which you have to send to the auditor to, to, to do the audit and before um, before you can complete uh, the return and logic. So that's all my presentation. I thank you for your time and have a great afternoon. Now we still will keep the session running for extra 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, in case you can think of any questions, please send through and we will try our best to answer them. And when we finish the whole webinar, we will collect the questions and polling results uh, 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 as well as the recording and send to you. Thank you.